comes out. Anyway, so we got some breaking news here. This is a shock. Shock. Like no one would have ever seen this coming. Like I love I love when like this kind of shit becomes news. I'm gonna show you the headline in a second. I love when this becomes news because it's like, why is this news? There's nothing new about this. But anyway, when young children test positive for COVID-19 and another respiratory virus, their illness may be much more severe, a new study suggests. Like, can we put this in the category of like, no fucking shit, jackass? Like, could you imagine someone reading this and going like, whoa, when you're, when you're double infected with two viruses, it's actually worse. <laughs> like, whoa. Who would have fucking thunk when you get infected with an immunocompromising uh, virus that lowers your immune system and then another virus is going to fuck you up even more? Whoa! It's almost like maybe we shouldn't have given 98% of our under 18s COVID, by the way, which is a fact that is CDC approved and, uh, and it's on their website. Approximately 97% of kids, and by kids I mean under 18, 97% have been undergoing a mandatory medical experiment known as forcing themselves to get COVID. Actually, I shouldn't say they're forcing themselves because they're not. They're being forced by their parents to go to school and they're being forced by the government to go to school because kids are property, kids are slaves, and they have no free will in this instance. They are forced to go to school and get COVID, which is a mandatory medical experiment. So we'll see how that plays out. But also, young kids under than five are also getting fucked pretty hard here. And, uh, and let's read. When, remember that meme, and I call it a meme because it is a meme, but do you remember that meme of like kids are immune to COVID? Do you remember when Donald Trump was saying that shit? Like, and the kids, it doesn't even, it just goes right through them. It doesn't even affect them. Remember that? Like, do, how many people out there do you think still think that COVID somehow like doesn't affect kids? <laughs> like what? <laughs> like, like, I mean, seriously though, but in a country where 83% of the citizens in this country are anti-vaxxers, I mean, you know, we got a lot of dumb motherfuckers here, but seriously though, like, do you remember that shit? And the kids are seemingly immune. They're immune. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, so that's a bunch of dumbass shit. You know, I say this again. You know, I'd rather die as a five-year-old than die as a 20-something-year-old. Like, I don't, you know, I have a barely developed brain. You know, I'm, I'm not even really conscious. Like, how many memories do you have from when you were five years old? Like, maybe 10 memories, you know? So if I'm going to get killed by a deadly virus, I'd rather get killed as a five-year-old. That's my opinion. Rather than being, like, a 16-year-old and be forced to go to school, get COVID, now you can't taste anything anymore. Like, I mean, like, come on now. But anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's read this. Let's keep going, a.k.a. let's start. When COVID-19 patients younger than five also test positive for another respiratory virus, they tend to become sicker and develop more severe disease, a new study suggests. Now, there's a word here that's bad here, another, which implies that COVID-19 is a respiratory virus, which it is not. It is a vascular disease that, again, it targets your respiratory system because how do you get the virus? How do you get infected? You go like this. <gasps> And what happens, right, when you breathe, right, when you breathe, right, what you're breathing in goes into your fucking respiratory system. So that's why it starts out in the respiratory system. That doesn't necessarily make it a respiratory virus, though, I should say. There are viruses that get in the respiratory system and stay in the re respiratory system. COVID-19 is not one of those viruses. That's not a thing. It goes all over the fucking place. Okay, so anyway, we found COVID in the brain, the heart. We found COVID in the toes. We found COVID, how does, how does it in the toes? Because it's in the blood, right? It's all over the fucking body, right? So again, calling it a respiratory virus, um, you know, a little bit of medical disinformation. But hey, we're on CNN, right? We're on CNN Health. So I mean, you know, get some medical disinformation from CNN just to calm the panic now a little bit. Among hospitalized children younger than five, testing positive for both COVID-19 and another respiratory virus at the same time is associated with about twice the odds of severe respiratory illness. I mean, like, I'm serious though. Like, is this really a joke? Like, this is a joke, right? Like, this is a fucking joke. If you get two diseases at the same time, you are now dealing with double the amount of issues. Whoa! <laughs> like, I'm... Like, I mean, seriously, though, like, are we really at this position where this is news? We need a study for that? We need a study to prove that when you get sick with two different viruses that it's actually worse <laughs> than getting sick with just one? Like, uh, but anyway, I don't know. Anyway, let's keep going. The study 
comes amid a harsh season of respiratory viruses, including RSV, flu, COVID-19, and other viruses that overwhelm children's hospitals. By the way, you see politicians, I'm talking about Democrats. You see Democrats, Republicans are a lost cause. You see Democrats talking about children's hospitals. Nah, Joe Biden's going on like, back to school, Jack. Everyone gonna get back to school. Fuck the children's hospitals. Back to school. That's our policy. Thank you, Joe Biden, for that one. The findings demonstrate the impact that respiratory viruses have on pediatric hospitals. And our continued surveillance of circulating COVID-19 and other illnesses can help predict future surges in hospitalizations, wrote the researchers from the U.S. Oh, wow, the CDC. And prevention. I love that. So we got Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I mean, can we talk about, like, this is, like, literally, I mean, again, hate to break it to you, but this is quite literally a 1984 scenario, right? Okay, you got Centers for Disease Control. They're not controlling anything. And prevention. They're doing the opposite of both of those things, right? They are making it so that it is extremely more transmissible. They are forcing higher transmission rates. And they're not controlling it in any way. In fact, they're letting it go all over the country in the form of airplanes. Right? So again, control, prevention, I don't know. But let's keep going. Caring for young children with overlapping respiratory illnesses was something Genevieve Silva has experienced firsthand through the COVID-19, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Quote, the height of illnesses, uh, illnesses was from September through mid-November when our household just could not catch a break. The mother of eight, Christ almighty, like, take a goddamn break after eight kids, eight fucking kids, like, Jesus, motherfucking Christ, you know, I mean, my God, like, okay, I just want to say this much, is it even possible to raise eight kids with the amount of attention that each one would deserve? I'm just asking a genuine question, I don't know, maybe you got that, like, you know, big family solidarity where, like, the big siblings are also helping raise, you know, maybe you got that shit going on, but eight kids, man, Jesus fucking Christ said that her toddler aged twin boys, quote, twin boys, so she got eight kids and twin boys. Like, god damn, she is like spitting out two, three at a time. <laughs> this fucking goddamn, okay. Let's keep going. Um, where are we actually? Okay, toddler aged twin boys have been battered by viruses since they started preschool in May 2021. I love that, by the way. Born into the pandemic, like these motherfuckers never had a chance. They got born into a pandemic with stupid, shitty ass parents they're gonzo. They're gonzo. These twin boys, I mean, I feel fucking sorry for them. Could you imagine procreating during a pandemic? Like, I'm serious. Like, I mean, my God, talk about dumb shit for brains of life decisions. Having a child during a fucking pandemic. I mean, that's up there. I mean, that's up there as far as like really stupid life decisions. Like drinking and driving, pretty bad. But having a kid during a pandemic might be worse. All right, let's keep going. Last October, Silva's twins tested positive for COVID-19 and then developed what their pediatrician suspected was another respiratory viral infection. Again, with the word another. Possibly respiratory syncatical virus or RSV around the same time. Quote, based on what the pediatrician told us, she said, I highly believe that they have these overlapping viruses, Silva said, adding that the boy's symptoms included shortness of breath, cough, fatigue, and fever, with one twin having a 105 degree fever for four days straight. Yo, that twin's brain has been cooked into nothing, man. Yo, we're talking about like a two year old or a three year old. I don't know how, like a three year old, maybe. Um, you know, like. <laughs> like they got I don't know 105 degrees I mean that's fucking crazy holy shit man warm baths and massaging Vicks Vapo rub onto their backs and chest help ease the pain but watching the boys battle these respiratory illnesses was brutal Silva said they had just looked so frail they looked sick like something deeper than just back-to-back -back viruses not back-to-back back-to-back -back is one and then the other we're talking about back and back <laughs> like we're talking about back and front motherfucker like my god it was hell. I mean, it was really bad. I mean, I, I, you know, it was hell. I mean, it was really bad. I mean, that's what that's what I, I would assume hell meant. It was really bad. Quote, I can't be the only mom dealing with virus after virus. Now, this is what I'm saying, too. Right? Like, we're all, we're, again, we've been forced and we have been forced since, you know, there's an argument to be made that the 1918 Spanish influenza never ended. We just stopped caring about it. I mean, we're talking about 40,000 deaths every year from the flu. 
for decades, for decades. Was that not a pandemic? I mean, seriously, like, come on, like this COVID's a pandemic, but the flu is not. I mean, okay, sure, fine, whatever. But again, we're all forced to participate in this like dumb reality game show bullshit where we all like forget that like, you know, we've made thousands of years of scientific advancement. We all forget that there's been thousands of years of medical advancement. Like Jesus fucking Christ. You would think we had learned something between the 1918 fucking quote unquote Spanish influenza pandemic. Again, Spanish is an interesting way to describe a disease that came out of fucking Kansas. <laughs> you know, isn't that also crazy? Isn't that fucking, okay. So we got a disease that starts out in Kansas. What do we call it? The Spanish fucking flu. I mean, you want to talk about the least Spanish thing in the world, Kansas. Okay, motherfucker. Jesus, goddamn Christ. But anyway, let's keep going. Ever since October, when they had the overlapping illnesses, the doctor has now said it seems like they might have triggered asthma in them. Oh, great. Great. Asthma induced from COVID-19, but I thought kids were immune. I thought they were immune. What the hell happened, Donald? OJM, the orange J man, what happened? I thought the kids were immune. What the fuck? You're telling me the president lied? Joe Biden said it was safe to go back to school. You're telling me the presidents of this country lied to us? Whoa! Holy fucking moly. Quote, I can't be the only mom dealing with the virus. She said, adding that for other parents out there, she has a message of hope. Be patient. Listen to your doctor. Okay. The new study included data on 4,372 children who were hospitalized with COVID-19. Among those who were tested for other respiratory viruses, 21% had a co-detection, meaning another respiratory virus was detected in their test results. I mean... Like, I know Americans are dumb, but do we really need that? Like, code detection is too hard to understand. Like, I mean, come on. Okay. The data came from, oh, great. The U.S. Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention's COVID-19 Hospitalization Surveillance Network called COVIDnet. With the <laughs> COVIDnet, they got a surveillance network. They're sitting back and assessing. Are they going to control anything? Well, that remains to be seen. Are they going to prevent anything? Well... I don't know about that one, Jack, but they are going to surveil the situation. <laughs> the researchers noted that they focused on co-detection, not co-infection, since testing wouldn't necessarily show that a child was actively infected with both viruses just because they test positive. Overall, quote, this study found that respiratory virus co-detections were rare in the first year of the pandemic. RSV and rhinovirus, or Enterovirus co-detection increased during the Delta predominant period and influenza co-detections were infrequent throughout the first two years of the pandemic, the researchers wrote in the study. Wait, so you're telling me it's getting worse? What? What? You're telling me it's actually getting worse? You're telling me that years of doing nothing to combat COVID has made it the situation even worse for everybody involved? Whoa. Whoa. It's almost like we should have done something about this years ago before this happened. But hey, what do I know? I'm just some stupid high school dropout, right? You know, whatever. I'm not as smart as Joe Biden and Kamala didn't see Delta coming. Harris had no idea. They had no idea that there were going to be variants, right? Right? You know. <laughs> Woo! All right. Specifically for children younger than two, testing positive for respiratory syncytical virus, or RSV, while having COVID-19 was significantly associated with severe illness. You know what happens when you get severe illness also, by the way? You die. You fucking die. That's what happens. Now, sometimes you don't. It's possible. But a lot of the time when people get severely ill, they fucking die, right? Their body cooks itself and then they blow the fuck up inside and then they turn into a fucking, you know, decomposing corpse. Like, you know, that's what happens when you get fucking sick. They kill that shit, okay? More research is needed on the precise impact. I mean, do we really need to know what the fucking precise impact of COVID-19 and RSV is to prevent it? Can we just fucking prevent it? Can we just fucking stop the pandemic? Can we just fucking do a quarantine for Christ's sake? Can we stop sending kids to these fucking goddamn COVID facilities? Can we stop forcing them to get sick over and over? Like, is it possible? Is it possible? Do we really need to be studying the impact? Can't we just fucking put all that money in 
into, I don't know, food delivery? Can we put all that money into, I don't know, pharmaceutical delivery, rent relief? You know, can we do, can we do something about this? Can we maybe quarantine, you know, maybe stay home from work? Does anyone really need to be working at Wendy's during a pandemic? Let's be honest. Do Americans really need their Wendy's right now? Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Our society is fucking broken. It's broken. It's fucking broken. Anyway, you can read more of this. The pandemic taught us how contagious these viruses are. <laughs> no, it didn't. If you didn't know that fucking deadly viruses are fucking contagious as shit before the pandemic, I'm sorry. You shouldn't be a fucking epidemiologist. You shouldn't be at the CDC. Jesus fucking Christ. But anyway, uh, so there's your COVID update. Turns out kids are actually not immune. Turns out they're getting fucked pretty hard. And uh, are their parents going to do anything? No. Is the government going to do anything? No. Are schools going to do anything? No. Is the CDC going to do anything? No. Are, there, are corporations going to do anything? No. Are other countries going to do anything? No. Are the, is the WHO going to do anything? No. Is anyone going to do anything? No. Is Joe Biden going to do anything? No. Is Ron DeSantis, who when he wins in 2025, going to do anything? No. No one's going to do anything. So I say, you're on your own, Jack. Have fun. Year four, baby. Give it up for year four of the fucking pandemic. You know, I'm doing that SpongeBob reference. You know that shit? We're in year fucking four. Year fucking four. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has not even tried to prevent or control any of this shit. Four years in. Four years in. They've done nothing. Nothing. They've done nothing at all. So anyway, there's your COVID update.